Hi, it's Marie from Marie Scrappy Creations, where we sew the scraps of your life into beautiful creations. What are we making this week? Ah, I had a few people ask me about those zippered bags that I showed a few weeks ago. They're called an open wide zippered pouch, and I first saw them over at Charmed by Ashley, and she put on a heck of a tutorial. The only thing I'm really doing different is I'm showing you how to make it with scraps. You can use yardage, you can use anything you want. This is what they look like. And they're called an open wide zipper pouch because the zipper extends past the edge of the bag. And in doing so, it makes it so that, oops, catch the thread, makes it so that your bag opens up nice and wide. You don't have to sew zipper tabs on each end of your zipper, and you don't have those crooked zipper ends that sometimes happen. It's perfect bag all the way around and people love it. You can make it in any size. Today's size, uh, when I give the dimensions, you can totally change that up. You can do whatever you want to do. I have made these large like this. I have made them smaller than this. And if you remember right, last week we made this tote bag that everybody loves. Well, this matches it. Isn't that beautiful? What a beautiful set. So are you ready? You got your machine? Is it warmed up? Thread ready? Fabric out? Let's go! So this is what you're going to need. I have two pieces of cotton batting measuring approximately 8 by 10 inches and we are going to cut those down in a little bit after we've sewn onto them. So you need two pieces of either fusible fleece, cotton batting, felt, something to uh, sew onto. And if you wanted to, you could simply use a piece of cotton. You do not need to have a batting. That's just what I'm using. I have my strips cut to, well, a little better than eight inches. Some of them are eight and a half, some of them are nine. And what I'm going to do, I'll take you over to the sewing machine. I'm going to place one down on my fabric. I'm going to put the, the next one right sides facing and I'm going to sew a quarter inch seam and then we will flip that open. So you can watch me do this at the machine, but we're going to do this with both of these pieces of batting that we have here and I'm using these strips in no particular order I'm just going to make sure that I don't exactly repeat it side to side I don't want them to be the same I like the scrappy look to it I'll see you over at the machine now as I said I have these right sides together I'm using a quarter inch seam allowance or a quarter inch foot. You could use a regular presser foot. You could use a walking foot if you choose. That's totally up to you. I'm using a stitch length of 2.5. There again, use what you're comfortable with. Flip open, finger press, take your next piece, put it right sides together. I'm going to pin to hold that in place and again I'm going to sew it with a quarter inch seam allowance. Going to flip that open and I'm going to work from the other side now. So I'll take fabric, place it down. And all we're doing is quilting as we go meaning it's, it's already connected to your base fabric. You could go back and decorative stitch in between here if you choose to, totally up to you. Uh, there have been bags I've done that on and bags I have not. One last piece. So 
So I'm going to repeat this with my second one right here. But all I've done is, as you saw, flipped and sewn. I'm going to take this over and I'm going to give this a press so that it's nice and flat. And then I'll trim it and I'll be back. Here we have our two trimmed pieces. They measure seven inches by nine inches each. And if you'll notice, my fabric didn't go all the way to the edge. I have about an eighth of an inch that's off. But that's going to get caught up in the seam allowance and nobody's ever going to know. So if you have a little mistake, don't worry. <laughs> all right, so the other two pieces that we have are our lining pieces that measure exactly seven by nine, just like our outer pieces. So you've got two lining pieces and two outer pieces. The only other thing you need is a zipper. And I do have a long zipper. I buy them longer and that way I have them when whatever size bag or whatever that I'm making. So as long as you have a nylon zipper that's at least uh, three inches longer than your bag, you're good. Now, if you don't want to use the seven inch by nine inch pieces, you can cut them whatever size you want. I've cut them square. I've made large bags, small bags. Whatever size you want, you go with, okay? So, if you're scared of the zipper, I would say I know where you are. I, I used to be afraid of a zipper, but no longer. So, when I saw this technique over at Charmed by Ashley, and I will drop her link below, at first I thought, why is she doing that? Well, it's ingenious. Now, I don't know if it's her idea, if she saw it somewhere, I don't know, but she is who taught it to me. So anyway, I open my zipper and I'm going to place it down, right side. See the, the zipper is here. We're going to put it right side down next to the, what is the upper part of our bag. Okay. Now I put a little pin in there to hold it. If if you're nervous, there is such a product called zipper tape that you iron along and it will hold your zipper in place. And I used that when I first started out, but you know, I found it was so friggy to work with that it was just easier for me to use it like this and learn to do it. And this bag will forgive a multitude of mistakes. So, so I would, I would just urge you to give this a try if you've never tried a zipper. Okay, we're going to take the bottom of the zipper and we're going to fold it up like a little triangle. I hope you can see that. All I'm doing is taking the bottom and I'm folding it up. I'm going to crease it. Hopefully on the other side where it's darker fabric, I can show you a little better. I'm going to pin that in place because I find it doesn't stay very well unless I pin it. Um, it might look a little messy, but it's folded upward into a triangle. Then I want you to lay your zipper across. Now, here again, if you want to use a zipper tape, you, you certainly could. I'm going to hold this with a couple of pins that I'm going to move in just a moment. And remember, the zipper is facing down. So it's right side of the zipper to the right side of the front of your fabric. Over here on this edge, you want to stop about one and a quarter inches from the edge. And I want you to mark your zipper right there. And the reason for that is we're going to stop sewing this zipper at that point. We're going to move that out of the way. And I will show you that when we're at the machine. But for now, you're just going to pin it out of place. So I'm placing my pins like this so that they're easily movable because now I'm going to take my lining and I'm going to put it right side down against this. So now I need to hold my fabrics together and move my pins. And that's all I'm doing is just all these edges the zipper, your lining, and your outer fabric all need to be lined up. 
that's what we're going to do. So you're going to take and put your zipper foot on. Some people can use a quarter inch foot. I can't seem to do that, but some can. We're going to back tack and we're going to sew along here until we get to that mark where we've marked that one and a quarter inch from the end. And what we're going to do at that point with our needle down, say, say this is our sewing machine needle, and we stop at that point for a minute. We're going to move. We're going to take that zipper, we're going to move it down out of the way so that we're only sewing the bag. So the zipper is going to come down out of the way like that. So you're going to sew all along here, get to the inch and a quarter from the end, stop with your needle in the down position, pull your zipper out of the way, and continue to sew to the end, back tacking at the end. And you meet me back here and I'll show you what to do next. Here we are, and I am one and a quarter inches. I'm right at this mark. I'm one and a quarter inches from the end of the bag. So now I'm going to move my zipper. I'm just going to pull it down. See, just pulling it down out of the way. And I'm going to straighten my fabric back out. And then I'm going to continue to sew. Actually, I'll move this pin out of the way too. So it's just moved out of the way at the very end. That's what it should look like. It should just be coming loosely out the end. Here we are with our piece all sewn. We're going to flip that lining up. We're going to fold this down. Just finger press it out of the way. At this point, I do zip up the zipper. For a moment anyway. Actually, I don't do it all the way or I can't do what I want to do. So now you're going to take your fabric and put whatever you want. I guess I don't know which way I want to go here. I guess I can go this way. So you're going to put right side to right side. And remember, we're going to do that same thing. We're going to fold that zipper up just like that. We're going to put this corner right there. And this is where I like to unzip my zipper so that I can see what I'm working with here. So I'm on the right side. Right side of my lining facing the right side of the outer piece. And you're going to sandwich that right there. And all we're going to do is pin it just like we did before, making sure that your zipper and your lining all meet at the top until we get to one and a quarter inches from the end. I had never seen a zipper put in this way and I really love this pouch because it does open wide and you don't have to make the zipper tabs in the normal way although we are we are missing a piece I forgot to tell you guys uh, you're going to need a two by three inch piece for your zipper I guess you'd have to call it a tab on the end but we're they're not going to go here or here they're going to go on the actual zipper it's going to go there on the end Okay, so let's measure that from, I like to mark that right now, so I know where my inch and a quarter is. Now, I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine, I'm going to back tack using my zipper foot, and I'm going to sew all the way along here until I get to here. And just as I showed you before, I'm going to move that zipper out of the way and then continue. So that's why I have a special mark, you know, a different pin. You could mark it with a pen. You could do whatever it is that's going to make you remember that you need to stop there with your needle down 
and then move your zipper out of the way and continue to sew to the end. So I'll meet you back here after we do that. Our second side is sewn. So you're gonna to wanna to flip that right side out. And these can get a little twisted around there. This is what it should look like, similar to this. Your lining and your front. And we're not going to top stitch yet. We will get to that, but not yet. So for now, unzip it a little more than halfway. And something that I do is I use a big safety pin and I fold my zipper up, especially if, I'm, if I've got a really long one like I do now. And a lot of times I will trim that off there, but I don't want you to just in case you're not used to working with zippers because if your zipper pull comes off, I find it hard to get them back on there. Other people buy zippers by the yard and they put them on and I'm not one of those people. <laughs> okay. So I've just kind of pinned my zipper so it stays out of my way. Now we're going to match right side to right side, just like so. And you can clip it, you can pin it, whatever is your choice. I always do my corners first, make sure they meet, and then line up. The next thing I go to is right here, and I make sure that my seams meet, one nesting one way, one nesting the other. Try not to drive the pin through your hand, and you can pin it right there. Then I go back and pin the side. It doesn't take a whole lot to hold it together. We're going to do this other side. Now we've got a little bit of bulk from the zipper, but don't let it get in your way. It'll move. Show it who's boss. It will move. Put the pin in the side. And again, with the lining, I do the corners. Now, you have a choice at this point. You could leave an opening in the bottom of your bag. That's what a lot of people do, and, and that's fine. I tend to leave it in the side. I think it's less noticeable that way. So I'm going to mark my pins by putting them the opposite way. And let's see how big that opening is. Oops. Yeah, just roughly four inches. That's good. You don't want to get too close to here and you can't go too far this way because we're going to cut the edge. We're going to cut the corner off there. So when you leave this opening, I want you to back tack both ways on both sides of this. So just pin around. Okay. So you're going to start sewing here, back tack, and you're going to sew up and around and come down. And you're going to back tack here and you're going to stop and come back. Then we're going to start working on the next part of our bag. See you then. And here we've sewn all the way around, leaving the four inch opening in the side. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to mark one and a quarter inches and I want you to go from the outer edge. If you've sewn the same seam allowance around, um, this is what I want you to do if you used about a quarter of an inch. So we're going to make a box that's one and a quarter inches from the outside edges on all four. All four corners. And it doesn't matter what you mark it with because this isn't going to show. Nobody's going to know that those marks are there. 
and I have used, this is a gusset, and I have used a bigger gusset before, uh, and you certainly could, but you got to remember that we've only got this opening here, so this is all we've got between the top of this gusset and the ending of where we started there, so you got to leave yourself a little bit of room there to sew that closed. And with your scissors, you're going to cut these boxes. I never get through and I always end up going back on that little snip. Probably something in my brain that's just a tick or something. I can't do it. Let me see. Can I? Ah, I did it. Ah. Yay. I win the award today, don't I? <laughs> okay, let's see. No, of course I didn't. I'm always afraid of snipping too far and going up into the bag, so I'd, I guess I'd rather be short and have to go back and take that little tip off than to have gone too far. See, it's just a little bit, just hanging on by a thread. Okay. And if you were with me for our last bag pattern, we did the same thing. We go like this. We put our seams together. We nest them, one going one way, one going the other. If your machine is a little bit contrary, just go slow. It'll do it. Some, some machines I've had, I've had to hand crank past there. And you can do it. Remember, our mothers and grandmothers use treadle machines. You can do that. I have faith in you. Okay, so you're nesting your seams. I like to place the pin right in the seam so I know that it's going to be perfectly lined up. And I just caught myself again. I have a terrible habit of saying gonna instead of going to. I, don't know. I guess we all get speech patterns based on where we live and that is my downfall. I'm huge into the correct use of things like uh, two, two, and two, uh, your, your, you know, with an apostrophe or not. Those things drive me crazy when people misuse them. So I'm sure my speech patterns drive other people crazy. So I'm, I guess they're getting back at me. Okay. So we're going to take this, I'm going to take this over to the machine. I'm not going to show you this, but we're going to stitch a quarter inch seam on all four of these pieces. And then come back and I'll show you what's next. And we're back. All four are sewn. Now, if you weren't with me last time, you're going to want to pay attention because the last bag I made with box corners, I showed this technique and I don't want, it's not difficult. I just don't want any confusion. You're going to take this edge that you just sewed, follow the line up to the other edge right there. Put those together. Hold it with a pin. You're going to sew back and forth. I don't go the whole length. I just a little bit back and forth over the seam about four times. I just want to hold it. Now this other side can be a bit tricky, especially on a smaller bag, but just take it and fold it just like this. You're just matching those seams and I know it looks a little funny, but this will hold the bag down inside there. So you're going to go back tack three or four times on each of these and come back. And we're back with our little oddball looking thing here. <laughs> Isn't that weird? Now, the other thing I like to do, and if you don't want to do this, you don't have to, but this is up at the end where our zippers are going across. I like to take a little bit of that bulk out, and I don't take a whole lot. I just get in there and take a little bit of that bulk because when I top stitch it, my machine likes that so much better when that bulk is all gone. So now we're going to take the opening that we left in the liner and we're going to work that bag right out through there. And sometimes it can take a few minutes and you can think, what did I get myself into? Did I do it right? But you did. If you followed the steps, you did it right. And if you can get to that pin, pull up on your zipper zip it out and that makes it so much easier oh wow see this is looking like a zippered pouch now isn't it 
So take your finger down in here, poke out your corners. And this is what we have. We're almost done. You see how that zipper lays? So what we're going to do next, we're going to take this over. You're going to measure out two and a half inches. You could do it more if you want. I go two and a half inches from this edge and I cut my zipper off. Okay, so let's do that. So here's our zipper, two and a half inches long. Here is our two inch by three inch piece of zipper tab. Now, if you can notice, I, I folded that in the middle and I creased it right there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place that right sides along the bottom of my zipper. I'm gonna line that little center line up with the center of my zipper. I'm gonna wrap my zipper around that and regret my choice of taking my pins off. <laughs> okay. I'm going to mark a an, mark three quarters of an inch from this edge. So three quarters of an inch over, make a mark, and sew on that line. Go back and forth a couple of times and come back. Okay, I've sewn three quarters of an inch from the line. Now I'm just going to pull that bottom up, up and over. And I usually take it to the iron now, and I press these. I'm going to see if I can finger press these so I can show you. I might be able to get them lined up looking over the camera. I'm going to make creases with my fingernail. So you're going to fold this down until it lines up. So see, I need to move it a little bit. You'll find when it's right. And this is what you should be doing. This is what you're going for. You're folding it over. Make sure all your edges are tucked in. You're gonna pin and sew around there and we are so close to done. You're gonna be so proud of yourself. I'm proud of you. Hey, did you see me poke myself? I didn't even say a bad word or anything. No, okay. So I'm going to go to the machine and I'm going to sew in a square around here to close this up, close this tab up, and I'll meet you back here in a minute. Wow, look at that. It's looking like a bag, isn't it? Okay, we have one more thing left to do. We need to top stitch. So the first thing I do, I always pin. Sometimes I have ironed this to make sure it lays flat, but then other times I melted my <laughs> nylon zipper, so I don't want to do that again. And I would advise you if you iron it to be very careful. So what I have found is better, for me anyway, is to simply push down the, the liner where it should be, push down the front where it should be, and hold it with a pin. And then I lengthen my stink, stitch length, excuse me, when I go around, I usually go to about a 3.0, which I, I believe is millimeters. I think that's what they're talking about um, on my machine. So I use about a 3.0 stitch length, and I back tack, of course, at the beginning and the end. And you're going to want to, if you have one of these machines where you can take this off, you're definitely going to want to because your bag will fit around here. <laughs> but it would definitely be harder to sew otherwise. So you're going to want to do that, I would think. So choose a complementary color. The other hint I would tell you is to start on the corner. I always start underneath the zipper. And that way my back tacking, it isn't showing over here. And I usually use about a quarter inch. You can still use your zipper foot if that's what you have on, or you can use a quarter inch or just the edge of your presser foot, whatever you want to do. So we're going to top stitch. And then the only thing left 
is to close up the opening inside and you can hand stitch that or machine stitch whichever you would rather do okay let's top stitch that and then see what we have and I'm back so this is what the top stitching looks like nice and neat all the way around I like the bigger stitches uh, I think they show up better of course I go to show you and they're not showing up okay so to do to finish the bag you can flip it inside out personally I would ladder stitch that by hand you can do whatever you want to do but if you ladder stitch it it's going to look similar to what it does right there it's gonna be nice and, and neat um, you could also hold it let's see like this and put it underneath your presser foot and sew along the edge those are your choices to finish the bag but otherwise we are done and if you have followed along you are the owner of an open wide zippered pouch and these are fabulous bags uh, i have made them with handles i've taken I believe a four inch wide piece of fabric and folded it towards the center and then again and just left the strap as long as I wanted to and when I put my sides together I simply worked it into the seam uh, maybe the next bag we do we can do one with one of those handles but I think that you can do this I I totally have every bit of faith that you can do this. They're not difficult and people love them. Some people keep them in their cars for just doodads. Some people use them as a cosmetic case. Some people use them for medications. There's just so many uses. And isn't that cute? And over and above that, it matches the bag from last week's tutorial. Doesn't that look nice? The only fabric I actually had left from this bag was strips of this. I thought I had more of the other ones, but I had used them all. So, uh, but I used enough of these that I, in the same colors, that I think it matches perfectly. What do you think? I think that makes, makes a great set. And I want to thank you for hanging out with me today and making this project. Please be sure to like, subscribe if you're not. You can share this on your social media and I would love to hear how your bag turns out. I would absolutely love to hear about it. So until next time, take care of yourself, stay safe, and I'll see you on Wednesday for What's Up Wednesday. Bye-bye.